are very obviously distinct spectral properties, like the Vesta family. But beyond that, sometimes we need to look deeper into the background of the main belt and try to use a quantitative clustering technique. And so there's a real simple clustering technique um, called hierarchical clustering, where you look at the what we call a delta V of each orbit, where we, we quantify the difference in asteroids' orbits in terms of a, a velocity it would take to change one asteroid's orbit to the other asteroid's orbit. And so that's essentially what this criterion is here, telling us the velocity requirement to evolve from one orbit to the next. And so we can start at a possible asteroid family parent and calculate around it the small velocity criterion, say 10 meters per second, and see how many asteroids fall within that, that circle. And then you can take all of those asteroids and try to cluster their neighbors as well and build a family that are all within a certain velocity criteria of each other. And you can do this and iterate over larger and larger velocity criteria until you see that you've, you've built a strong cluster of your family. And we can give you a little demonstration of this. This is the, the family we looked at earlier, the Aragoni family. We're starting with the parent body Aragoni. This is the clustering criteria that we're using, 10 meters per second, and we'll slowly increase this and watch as, as it continues to link more and more bodies in the area around it. We better watch that again. That happened really fast. So somewhere around 30 or 40 meters per second, it starts to grab one of its, one of its ears, and then at 50 or 60, it grabs the rest of the, the family that we see here. Now, if we ran this further and we ran it out to 200 meters per second, we would jump from just this family and it would be a big enough criteria that it would grab the entire background around it. And eventually you'd link the entire asteroid belt. So as you look at these linkings as a, as a function of the velocity criteria, you link very few objects, you reach a plateau where you're linking this tight clustered family, and you go beyond that plateau and all of a sudden you're linking the entire asteroid belt. And the fact that you have a tight clustered family usually stands out in your, uh, in your, uh, your linking number. And that's what we're looking at here. Here's the number of, in the family as a function of our linking criteria. We have nothing, nothing, nothing. We get to 30 meters per second, and we jump up, and we plateau. We've reached the core of our family, and then all of a sudden, we have the entire asteroid belt. But we built our family, as we saw before, and we can see the V-shape and the tight cluster of orbital elements. So this tool is a bit of a blunt tool, and there's a number of ways for it to fail. Um, if your family is very, very old, it will have spread out very far in semi-major axis, and you'll need a very big velocity criterion to find it. But if your velocity criterion gets too big, you find simply the entire asteroid belt. So your family can grow so old and so diffuse that it's almost in indistinguishable with the background, or there's enough interlopers in the background that your linking routine gets distracted and it runs off and links a different family or an entire region of the asteroid belt. And larger families, or smaller families, suffer similar fates, that there are just so few members that it doesn't clearly stand out to the algorithm or by eye. So our younger and larger families are easier, your older and smaller families, this mechanism really, really struggles. So I've described a number of tools and a number of ideas about the, the main belt 